Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zachabane101, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Bloodborne. In the last episode, we took on Hemwick Charnel Lane, and today, which will be a little bit of a shorter episode, we'll be taking on the rest of Cathedral Ward. We'll be going up to the Healing Church, where those guys with those crazy, uh, dark robes, and the pale skin, and the alien-like black pupil eyes... Uh, we'll be go fighting those guys and checking out the healing church area. But first, we must upgrade our weapon. Let's go ahead and fortify the Kirk Hammer. We can get it up to plus five. Thanks to those twin bloodstone shards. Giving us 155 damage. That is definitely going to help us out considerably for the next fight. We also have two insight rasting uh, in our inventory here. And a bit of extra blood echoes that we can go ahead and spend... Uh, if we have any extra items here, no, we don't have any more cold blood, so we won't really be able to level up uh, just yet. So, for now, we'll spend the rest of our blood echoes at the store here for 360 blood echoes per blood vial. Might as well buy as many as we can, because we only have a very limited amount of blood vials to begin with. So, for now, might as well just do whatever we can to get as many, right? For now, though, let's go ahead and move on out to Cathedral Ward. So thanks to our previous success in recruiting a few more people to the Cathedral Ward, we were able to get the wonderful courtesan lady. And oh my, looks like the guy that we told to go to Yosefka's clinic has decided to come here as well. Let's go talk to him. Ah, you. The swindling off-comer. Did you really think that'd work? There's no fool in me. Now, off with you. You heard me. Go away. I can't stand the stench of your lying breath. I'll spare you one nugget of advice. Beware the blind man. There the beggar sits at the bottom of the bloody food chain, and then he's here acting like he owns the place. He's not to be trusted. What's he want with all those people anyway? That little weasel has a murky past, I'm telling you. Oh. Give it a rest, please. I've no time for your petty lies. And what? Just go away now. I can't stand the stench of your lying breath. So, of course, he didn't listen to us and consider our tale to be lying. So if we actually told him to come to the Cathedral Ward, he would think that we were lying. And he would actually go to Yosefka's clinic and various things would happen to him there. Now, if you send him to Yosefka's clinic, there's really no downside. You just miss out on some dialogue. This guy has pretty much zero significance to your ability to succeed in the game. Uh, whereas the older lady, she does have some significance. And, actually, the courtesan has a pretty great uh, significance to succeeding in the game. Uh, thanks to various items that we can grab. But for now, let's just go ahead and uh, see how she's doing. Oh, hello, dear. You weren't lying. This is a safe place. Thank you. I'm in your debt. I'd like to tender my thanks, but I haven't much to offer. All I can give is my blood. But would you even take a whore's blood? So of course we have a choice here. We can accept it, or we can choose not to accept it. Uh, at this point in time, there's no repercussions for actually accepting her blood, so we might as well take it. Oh, good. Come close, dear. Don't worry, this isn't the first time. <laughs> oh, hello. Sorry, dear. You're much too eager. I've only so much blood, okay? Alright, so her name is Ariana. This is actually the first time you actually find out her name is Ariana because I don't believe she gives off her name ever in the entire playthrough. Only through grabbing her blood you get this. So it says, Blood taken from Ariana, Cathedral Ward Woman of Pleasure. The sweet blood of Ariana restores HP and temporarily speeds stamina recovery. A member of the old healing church would know that her blood is similar indeed to precisely what was once forbidden. So, they forbode this type of, or forbode, they forbid this type of, uh, 
blood. So there's different types of blood in the world, and this in particular is different from the Healing Church blood. So then, of course, giving more significance to the world of blood, and the different types of people in the world, and how everyone's blood is different. And of course, we, we knew that from the very beginning, of course. We were injected with Yarnum blood, which was different from our own, of course, and then later we learned of the Healing Church blood, which has, has natural healing properties, and then now we've run into uh, Yosefka, who had even better healing properties than the standard blood vials that you find from the Yarnamites in the world. And then finally, we run into this lady here, Ariana, who has her own blood, which increases your stamina regeneration. And it's pretty considerable as well. Lots of stamina recovery there. Let's go talk to the blind man. Ah, oh, the hunter. Thank you. So that old man, you told him about this place, right? Well, he don't offer me much in a way of conversation, but still... I'd rather see him alive anyhow. And... I sort of hope that my asking you turn out to, you know, help him out in the end. I've never been any use to anyone, you see. Just happy about it, is all. If you find any sane survivors, well, send them a lot to Erden Chapel, will ya? <laughs> Such a poor guy. You can't help but feel some sympathy towards him. I just wonder how he got to the position that he's in. I can't quite tell if he's, like, transforming into a monster. Obviously his mouth is oversized, as if it was sliced open in some way. Uh, clearly blind, although he is looking directly at me, but that might be the... That might be simply because they, that's the way they design character faces. Because if you look at Ariana, her face will follow me as I walk around her. So maybe it's just to tell you that the NPC can actually talk to you. Let's go talk to the old lady as well. Yeah. Oh, she still hates us, so you know what? We'll just we'll ignore her for now. And we'll head out the front side of the Cathedral Ward. Aha! Finally! After years of searching, we have found Eileen once more. Oh, hello there. Perfect timing. I must warn you not to go near the tomb below Erden Chapel in the Cathedral Ward. Henrik, an old hunter, has gone mad. And he's my mark. Don't go near the tomb below Erden Chapel in the Cathedral Ward. I have business there first. <laughs> Don't go near the tomb. All right, so that's Eileen's little quest, uh, telling us to actually go to the tomb beneath Odin Chapel. Now, you can of course choose not to do that. You can choose not to do it, but it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do this because it has story significance and there's a badass set of armor that we can get out of this. So. Might as well go help her out. And of course, she'll help us out in the end, because this next fight is actually pretty difficult. We might run into a little bit of trouble here. As we wander back into central Yarnum. We'll even be able to see the prey that she's hunting as we go down below. And there he is. With the magic of the monocle, we're able to see further down that this is indeed Henrik. Which is a faithful companion, actually, to... Gascoin, and note how we're in the same area as Gascoin. Lots of big significances here to the area. Now, with uh, Henrik here, he's actually blocking our access to the bonfire, so we're going to need to finish him off regardless. Uh, he will be here and defeat Eileen if you don't help her out, so we're going to actually go here, see if we can fight him. Uh, a better place to fight him, though, is way up the stairs. In a much more logical position, and Eileen comes in to help. And the best thing we can do for her is just try and stay out of the way. And try not to hit her in the face, but there's a definite possibility it could happen. Alright, Eileen might try and run down the stairs, so I'm trying my best. Just not to hit her in the process of hitting Henry. Should be okay if we just keep flailing at him. He's actually getting pretty mauled here, which is great. 
There is definitely a great spot as well to handle him. And there we go. I think she barely even got hit. That's probably the best fight I've ever had against a guy. The air. Alright, let's go ahead and read this Carol rune before we talk to her. We'll let her catch her breath, of course. A Carol rune that transcribes inhuman sounds. The air sees sentimentality in the warmth of blood and acknowledges visceral attacks as one of the darker hunter techniques. More blood echoes gained from visceral attacks. Perhaps the heir is a hunter who bears the echoing will of those before him. This uh, actually grants true significance to Henry, or Henrik. Henry? Henrik? I forget his name. Um, where he is actually a very old hunter, and we're about to find out just how old he is once we buy his clothes with some insight here. <laughs> That wasn't necessary of you, but you have my thanks. We made it with our lives. You're not bad at all. You must have killed Gascoigne as well, then. He was falling apart, I'm sure it had to be done. But try to keep your hands clean. A hunter should hunt beasts. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. <laughs> Try to keep your hands clean. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, Eileen giving away who she truly is. She's a hunter of hunters, and she has been tasked with killing other hunters that are slowly turning and all that. All right. Let's just jump off the side here. Rest in peace, Gascoigne, as well. It's such a sad story, uh, Gascoigne and, you know, his daughter, his whole family, really. Alright, so back in base, with the doll falling asleep, having her own little dream in the nightmare, we're gonna go ahead and use up a few of our madman's knowledge. Oops, well... I didn't mean to use just one, actually. I think we need about seven in total. I'll actually just consume seven so we get all the way up to ten in sight, just in case we don't have enough. Even though I feel like that's uh, a bit much here. So these lovely little guys have now unlocked Henrik's gear. Okay, so it's Henrik. I was thinking like somewhere along the lines of Henry, Henrik, something like that. Henrik's hunter garb. Hunter's attire worn by Henrik, the old hunter. The taciturn old hunter Henrik was once partners with Father Gascoigne, and though they were a fierce and gallant duo, their partnership led to Henrik's tragically long life. Henrik's unique yellow garb is resistant to bolt and will be of great help to any hunter who has inherited, inherited the onus of the hunt. So, this is a game claiming that living for a long time is actually a bad thing in this world. Uh, the older you are, the more you see, the more you understand, and the more you just want to end it all yourself because of just how horrific it all gets. And of course, what we've seen so far, there's a lot of really messed up shit going on in this world. And Her Henrik was probably holding on for his entire life just for Gascoigne, maybe even Gascoigne's daughter. And maybe the terrifying thing to him was maybe he was waiting in the courtyard for Gascoigne's daughter to arrive, knowing that Gascoigne was dead, and... You know, unfortunately, the little girl uh, passed away, or was murdered by a giant boar, and uh, completely eviscerated. Totally not our fault. Okay, maybe just a little, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately, though, even if you don't talk to the little girl um, for the entirety of the game, even if you don't get the music box or acknowledge that she exists, uh, Henrik will still be there uh, waiting for her. Or maybe not. I mean, it's all speculation. There's no, There's nothing in the game actually explaining that, but I like to think it is. Uh, something similar. I know Vadi Vidya has a pretty good Prepare to Cry video on it, which I feel uh, is a pretty accurate portrayal of Henrik. But this is, of course, Henrik's gear. Very cool looking, of course. A favorite among many, uh, especially myself. I do quite enjoy the look of Henrik's garb. Definitely very cool. Uh, if you want to go for the cowboy look as well, we can go for Gascoigne's cap. Now we look like we're from like some sort of old western. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and uh, head right back to Cathedral Ward.
Now that we're back in Cathedral Ward, it's time to go face our next challenge, the Cathedral Ward boss. Which, uh, obviously not a great name for the boss, but regardless, definitely very important. You may notice that in the distance there, there's a giant dude with the bag over his back. So good thing we already got the humanity from him, so now we don't have to worry about it anymore. A good idea here, though, is just to kind of rush past everything. We can, of course, summon Henriette, which is not a sister to Henrik. It's just some random character here. Um, there are just many types of old hunters in the world of Bloodborne, so... They're just trying to introduce you to them all. Um, some of them have no significance over the story. And, of course, others do have some significance to the story. Uh, characters like Henrik and all that. We're just gonna run past all these nerds, if possible. Luckily, doors have very long invulnerability frames. Helping us out greatly here. I was going to see if these guys want to keep walking through. I believe they back off pretty quickly here. So this next area is pretty cool. If we uh, walk up here, we might see a woman. A woman? And she's talking here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just adjust the volume here. So you guys can hear them just fine. Mind young. The foul beasts will dangle nectar and lure the meek into the depths. Remain wary of the frailty of men. Their wills are weak, minds young. Were it not for fear, death would go unlamented. Seek the old blood. Let us pray, let us wish to partake in communion. Let us partake in communion. And feast upon the old blood. Our thirst for blood satiates us, soothes our fears. Seek the old blood. But beware, the frailty of men. Their wills are weak, minds young. The foul beasts will dangle nectar and lure the meek into the depths. All right, so that's the full dialogue from her. And I'll see if I can actually get the full dialogue in the description of the video. If I don't, feel free to uh, put that into the comment section if you want. Let's go ahead and confront her. So welcome to Vicar Amelia. She is very dangerous indeed, and her weak points are her arms and legs here. A good idea generally, stay behind her. Or to the side, whichever works best for you. Breaking her limbs will cause her to fall over and allow you to do some visceral attacks. Now fire would also be pretty great here because she is in fact a beast. Try our best to heal up here, before she goes a little bit nuts. Now, the thing that makes her really challenging later on is going to be... Oh, there we go. Let's try and get to the front. Ooh, can we get it? Can we get it? Oh, we didn't get it. Oh, no, we wasted our, our visceral attack. Anyway, the thing that makes this fight really difficult is later on, she'll start trying to heal. Which, for a lot of people, that screws with them greatly. Oh, boy. Okay, I might actually die here. All right, just going to try and get away. Heal up safely. Do I have fire paper? I do, actually. There we go. We're gonna try using some fire paper just to try and help ourselves out. There we go. Let's get to the front. And can we get it? We did. All right. 
We only get the one visceral attack on her this time around. But what can you do? As you can see, fire. Very powerful against beasts. It's almost like the game tried to tell us this before. I don't know about you. But I think the game's been trying to help us from the very beginning. <laughs> like, hey man. If you read these descriptions, you might know how to uh, defeat monsters. Alright, this is where she tries to heal. Uh, luckily, I think we stopped her from doing anything too major. The best way to really avoid most of the damage is to keep a really close eye on what she's trying to do. And what she's trying to accomplish. If she starts glowing like that, probably a good idea to start attacking her. Before she goes a little too crazy. Alright. I gotta try and get past her, please. Alright, thank you. Thank you, game. Ooh, crazy. Alright, if we get too far away, she will jet dash at us. And do some crazy shit. We don't want crazy shit to happen, but then again, it happens all the time. Alright, healing. I'm gonna activate the fire paper here. Now that she's trying to heal. You can see your health bar going up. Makes her that much more difficult. Having to deal with her in this way. It really affects you. There we go. Even though she healed through that, we were able to defeat her pretty easily there. Uh, she leaves herself wide open all the time. Uh, after she does the forward attack, or when you're close enough, she leaves herself so open you can get behind her, so... There's almost no chance of me dying here. No, I'm kidding. Actually, that, that fight's pretty difficult for most people, and I can see why. She does a lot of damage. Um, if you don't back away to heal, and you keep being very aggressive, and you be, be extremely greedy with uh, most of your attacks, Good chance you're gonna die. Um, also, of course, if you have extra fire paper like we did, thanks to the insight that we spent on the Hemwick battle, um, we were able to basically use some of that to increase our damage by a bunch and do some serious damage. All right, let's find out the password that we need to open a door. Master Willem, I've come to bid you farewell. Oh, I know, I know. You think now to betray me. No, but you will never listen. I tell you, I will not forget our adage. We are born of the blood. Made men by the blood. Undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. I must take my leave. So, of course, that was a conversation between Lawrence, which is actually this skull here. If you... <laughs> if you wouldn't believe it. This skull here is the skull of Lawrence, and he was talking to Master Willem. Now, if you don't know who Willem is, we've seen a few items pertaining to Willem. Uh, saying that Willem is one of the founders of... Probably not the Healing Church, because Lawrence, I believe, was the founder of the Healing Church. But before the Healing Church, there was Willem, and he was... Uh, infatuated with finding ways to talk to these old ones or whatever. And uh, later on, Lawrence, which we just saw there, broke away to go make the Healing Church, which is what follows the blood and the healing of blood. Both of them believe in two separate uh, things. One believes in eyes, which is, uh, which is Willem, and then Lawrence, who believes in the power of blood. Both, of course, saw different outcomes, and so far we've seen that the blood turns people into horrific monsters. So, as for what Willem found, well, we just don't know yet, but hopefully nothing as horrific as that. Now that we're back in the Hunter's Dream, let's go ahead and level up our character just a little bit here. 
And we'll get our strength bumped up just a bit more so we can do some massive damage to all the things. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be wrapping up this episode for today. I did say it was going to be a bit short. Hopefully tomorrow's episode will be a bit longer as we get past that door that was closed in Cathedral Ward, which I don't believe I've shown yet. So uh, I'll definitely be very excited to show you guys today. But at least we were able to clear out Henrik and also we were able to continue Eileen's storyline. And of course, we have now unlocked the powers to go to the DLC. Hopefully you guys are as excited for that as I am. And I'll see you all in the next one.